So this is me, sharing a glass of my wife's breast milk with Asda's head of dairy. Uh, I'm not sure. First few drops are like nectar, aren't they? I'm it's not sure I would agree with that in terms of nectar. Yeah, but, oh, jeez, nearly had me eye out. I was on a hunt for our most disgusting dairy products. There's pus in milk. There's pus. And it's legally allowed. And that was just for starters, because I found lots of disgusting things. Like the heart attack fat still allowed to be used as a butter substitute. Oh, don't mention the hydrogenated, because it's almost lethal. <laughs> that is what I call disgusting. I even unearthed a whole new world of disgusting with the help of some ill trained orangutans. Yeah, come on, keep up the energy. Oh, flipping it. Oi, get down from there. Along the way, I met people selling drugs who weren't too keen to sample their own gear. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Uh, we've got some, we've got some uh, milk. Would you I maybe just have, have a, a, have a quick really drink have, of it? I've, I've got it. I'm supposed to be there 10 minutes ago. Oh, so I'll give respect. Yeah, yeah. Then there was the run-in with the old Bill. This is the best way forward. Well, we think it's our way forward. Yes, even I was surprised at just how many disgusting things there turned out to be in the dairy world. Still alive. In the end, I had a go myself and created my very own dairy product. Oh no, thanks. No way. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to have to work on that one. Last year, as the BBC's resident connoisseur of crap, I made a programme about Britain's most disgusting foods and created my very own brand of pies full of all sorts of rubbish. My pies went down so well that I decided to expand the Mr Riley's brand and set myself a new challenge. The dairy business. I headed straight to the milk aisles to sniff out anything disgusting. OK, it didn't seem likely that lovely healthy milk would throw up any rubbish, so I moved on to cheeses and desserts and straight away, crap. The first thing that struck me was the dairy seemed to be missing. Uh, ten singles. I don't know whether it's, uh, they don't even mention that it's cheese. I found cheese slicers with virtually no cheese. Ice cream with no cream and pastries and cakes without any butter. And it was all perfectly legal. How were food manufacturers doing it? Replacing real dairy with cheap rubbish. I got a food technologist, Simon Wright, to spill the beans. Melted on the top of a burger. I mean, this is quite an interesting product. Ten singles. Single what? Single, single slices of something that looks a bit like cheese. The description is a blend of cheese, milk, protein, and vegetable oil. It's yellow. It's, it's square. yellow. It's could square. Be could be cheese style. It's more orange, um, actually, sort of thing that could then go into a, a sandwich for lunchbox, or maybe melted on the top of a burger. Looks like cheese, smells like cheese. You'll even find it in the cheese aisle. But these cheesy singles have so little cheese in them, most don't have the nerve to even use the C word. And here is the top five singles chart. At number two, it's Iceland with 11% cheese. Then at number two, it's Asda with 11%. And it's Tesco right there at number two with 11% cheese. And straight in at number two, it's Sainsbury's with a very stingy 11%. But at number one, it's the least cheesy, cheese-like cheese slice of them all. Morrison Singles with just 6% actual cheese. That's disgusting. So 94% of this cheese is not cheese. Well, it might be for people who are lactose intolerant. Um, well, unfortunately, it's got cheese in, so they still can't eat oh, it. Right. Look, it's, it sort of tears. A smooth, pasty texture. Um, it's a lovely orangey colour. This stuff is amazing. How do they make it? I spoke to a number of food scientists and I asked them how I could reverse engineer a cheese single. They told me to stop wasting their time. It's impossible unless you've got an enormous factory. But I've assembled all the ingredients and I'm going to have a go at doing it myself. So, using the exact ingredients on the back of a packet of Morrison Singles, I got some water, some whey protein, a favourite with pigs and bodybuilders, then vegetable oil, the cheaper the better. Just that curdled milk, that, not it? Milk protein, because they don't splash out on any actual milk. 
salt, some weird sounding chemicals like tricalcium phosphate, sodium polyphosphate, and even scorbic acid, which incidentally you can also use to descale your kettle. Modified maize starch, whatever that is. And lastly, the magic ingredient a really, really small amount of actual cheese, just 6%. I mixed it to a firm paste and gave it some gas. <coughs> doing what I thought it was going to do. It's, it's, not, it's not sort of melting and becoming it more even. <laughs> We're just taking a break now with all the windows open because when I uh, cook the mixture, uh, it burnt so badly that the whole place is full of really quite horrible fumes. <laughs> The food scientists told me it was impossible to make a cheese single without an industrial laboratory at my disposal. Well, I had a go. And I've done it. It seemed that cheap food manufacturers were going to great lengths to remove dairy from their products. But why? And what other crap could they use to replace it? Hydrogenated vegetable fat. These strudels, for example, have got hydrogenated fat in them. Mini croissants. Hydrogenated vegetables, oils and fats. That if you'd made these croissants with butter, they'd have a short shelf life because they're made with hydrogenated fat. They have a long shelf life. This is it. Whew. Got... This is great. very solid, Pretty isn't it? Pretty solid. Yes, you better believe it's not butter. It's HVO, hydrogenated vegetable oil. Banned on health grounds in Denmark... Switzerland and California. I called Professor Steen Stender, a Danish heart disease expert who was responsible for having it outlawed in Denmark. So, uh, what exactly is wrong with hydrogenated vegetable oil? Well, uh, it contains a type of fat named trans fat and um, that it is associated with an increased risk of uh, heart disease. So, do people actually need trans fats in their diet? No, no, no. It, it provides calories, but otherwise it's only harmful. Right, so it's much, it's much worse for you than even saturated animal fats. Yeah, yeah, it's much worse for you. So it would be a benefit just to replace trans fat with saturated fat. So it, is it the most dangerous fat? Yeah, yeah, I know of no other fat per gram which is as dangerous as trans fat. It is a metabolic poison. Um, I used to say it's good for shoe polish, but not for eating. Wow. Steen also told me that since they'd started reducing trans fats in the Danish diet, coronary heart disease had dropped significantly. Although it's not banned here, nearly every supermarket has removed HVO from their own food brands. But there was one place still holding out, the German-owned Uber market, Lidl. No fewer than 27 little own brand products contained hydrogenated vegetable oil. But did it have a shelf life even in Lidl? I wrote to them to see if they had plans to follow the other supermarkets lead and remove it from their own brands. Lidl got straight back to me. Some suppliers are finding it more difficult than others to get the desired quality without the use of hydrogenated fats. So basically, they're going to keep on selling this uh, substance in their products, which can give people coronary heart disease, just because the quality isn't quite right when they stop using it. Then I made a surprising discovery. Look at this. This is Lidl's website. Their charity partner is the British Heart Foundation, beating heart disease together. Obviously, the pennies dropped. They realise it's time they did something to actually look after their customers. But I think they're barking up the wrong tree with this. What they need is a much more targeted approach. Right, these are my uh, team. Uh, my team of uh, lederhosen clad uh, helpers. And in case anybody has uh, any heart trouble during the stunt, with all that HVO flying around, we've got a nurse who is fully qualified in uh, intimate massage. <laughs> the uh, the heart, uh, the heart, uh, the heart, ma heart massage. That's what I mean. I mean, strictly speaking, she's not state registered, but uh, you know, I'm happy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's a German company. That's why it's the German thing. 
I suspected Little were giving money to the British Heart Foundation to help keep their customers alive. But if Little never got the desired quality without HVO, their customers might be in need of more acute coronary care. So I headed to Little's HQ in Wimbledon. My plan was to raise money to provide heart care at every little store, just in case. It was my very own little HVO a thon. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. That's what we're talking about, people. Yeah. They're just sticking two fingers up to the established view and saying, look, come on. It's not going to kill you. Well, not immediately, anyway. Come on. Roll up, roll up. Excuse me, madam. Would you, would you like to uh, make a pledge? Would you like to make a pledge, sir? Who wants to pledge? I, I've got no pledges so far. Have you got, have you got anything? Have you got any money? Just what you put in to make it sound like you got some money in. Okay, so that means we've got absolutely nothing. Who'd like to have a heart attack so that the nurse can defibrillate your heart? Please. Why don't you set the ball rolling and pledge me 13p? Okay. <laughs> and yourself, would you like to uh, pledge? 15p. Hang on a minute. I mean, 250 million quid for a specialist heart hospital. Okay, one pound. It looked like I was going to get some support from an unexpected quarter. Can I put you down for 20p or uh, just a 50 pound? 50 pound? <laughs> Gentlemen, would you like to uh, make a pledge for our appeal? Can I put you down for 15p, 20p? Hello there. Looking for pledges. Can Money. I ask you to step away? Yes. From the Sorry. Yes, of course, of course. Can they actually sponsor the British Heart Foundation? Yes, yes, I know. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic that they do? That? Well, do you feel this is the best way forward? Well, we think it's our way forward. If you're looking for a disgusting food, this is a great place to look. Uh, that wasn't very successful. They didn't want to pledge any money. Seems like... I suppose they've got to remain neutral. They are the police, after all, and uh, it's not for them to say they support any one particular cause. They're, they are there to uh, uphold and enforce. But even the police couldn't stop the tidal wave of people desperate to pledge. So why do you not just wear a little T-shirt instead of wearing this kind of trousers? and using the national flag? Because these trousers are more amusing. I'm going to put another pledges of over £100 in here. So let's see what that gives us. There it goes. Doesn't it beautiful? It was better than I ever could have hoped. We'd raised enough for one hour's resuscitation training at three little stores. But we needed more. It was time to take things up a notch. Uh, I'm going down. I'm going in. Oh, that's soaking through the lady hose and that. Oh, yes. Come on! Come on! I feel like uh, uh, a little strudel. Oh! I feel like I've gone blind in one eye. What's happened? It was time to pass on the pledges to the premier peddlers of hydrogenated vegetable oil. Oh, hello, it's Alex Riley here. We, we've, we've raised over a hundred pounds to provide medical help in little stores for people who may have heart disease uh, through eating hydrogenated vegetable oil. I can't really help you because we've only got about 27 items left. Is there any, uh, anybody senior who could come down and uh, accept this cheque? It'd be a big uh, big media coup for, for little. Not in the press office, I don't think, no. Really? What it called what like yesterday or this morning. Yes. You might have had more than that. Oh, is it? I wasn't here though yesterday or this morning, so there you go. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I knew they were just being coy and they'd come down if I waited long enough. Here, here is a cheque for five pounds. Here, who'd like to accept the cheque? Here's a her cheque for 155 pounds and 13 pence. I mean, you know, in my view, that's bad manners. But then I got a heart-stopping result. Not that I like to take all the credit, but perhaps inspired by my HVOathon, Little wrote to me to say they decided to do their bit for the British heart and are going to stop ordering products containing HVO. They said by the time this program aired, it could all be gone from their supermarkets. Well, if you'd like to check it out for yourself, why not pop down to Little? Here are some of the products where I found it. Mm -hmm. 
I continued my search for disgusting dairy. Then I got an unexpected steer. I'd been used to sniffing out the rubbish from processed foods. But this tip-off was leading me to the purest food of all, and the mother of all dairy, milk. Now, I have to warn you, this tip-off came from a source that some might consider controversial. This is Hove near Brighton, where Heather Mills lives, and this is her cafe down there. Now, she's made some very uh, well-publicised comments about how disgusting milk is, so I thought I'd come and meet her and find out uh, for myself exactly what she's talking about. I'd read she'd rather drink milk from a dog or a rat than a cow. If anyone knew about the dirt on dairy, it would be Heather Mills. What, what I've done is I've mocked up some artwork, something that you might find quite interesting. Um, here we are, I've got, it's me uh, milking a dog and uh, also me milking a rat because in the press you reported as saying that instead of drinking cow's milk we would be better off drinking dog's milk or rats milk. Which so. I never said, and that shows you how irresponsible the press are. What I said was to drink cow's milk is as nuts as drinking rats or dog's milk. That's how crazy it is. There's pus in milk. But hang on a minute. There's pus yeah. in milk. Yes. If you imagine, you know, when we're teenagers squeezing our spot pus, yeah, there's pus two. in milk. And it's legally allowed. They're also um, not explaining all the growth hormones that we have in a lot of dairy around the world. Apparently it is lovely when it's fresh out of the other though, you know, unpasteurised, well, body temperature. This. I'd like to see you under a cow squirting milk and see whether you're happy to have that growth hormone pus antibiotics milk now that we've had this conversation. Has all milk got pus in it? Yeah. Has all milk got growth hormones? Yeah. Pus, growth hormones in milk. They both sounded pretty disgusting to me, but could it really be true? I'm on a pus hunt. I was heading down to a dairy farm in Somerset. I'm, I'm going to milk a cow when I get there. I think it'd be nice for a, for a cow that's used to having uh, mechanical suckers on its teeth to have my soft, delicate fingers. Never done it before. Uh, but I think I'm going to be quite good at it. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting afternoon here. John Webster, Professor of Animal Husbandry, was going to let me loose on his favourite cow, Mavis. Looks like she's already uh, dripping a bit of milk. Yes, she uh, is. Yes, yes, she's anticipating you. <laughs> Just stroke down the side of there, yeah, down to the other, and yeah. then when you get down there, at the back of your hand... Jeez, nearly had my eye out. I That's in the tail. Don't worry about that. <laughs> OK, you... Just, just pick up the tail, down here, yeah, and then, and then just, yeah, just, the just a nice firm stroke, like, like, like this, like, like down to the other, yeah. that, and then uh, uh, teeth behind like that. Look, yeah, come on, there, there's a good girl. I'm using all my all my moves. Oh yeah, she's automatically doing it for me. Look yeah, at she that, is. Yeah, well, so she's. It's called called letdown. It's oxytocin, the hormone associated with expulsion of. Um, milk in all animals, and also orgasm, if you want to include that in the script. I don't want to give her an orgasm. Um, no, she won't get it, but it's the same hormone. Mm. Mm. I have milked my first cow. I have managed to get milk to squirt out into a saucepan. I'm, uh, I'm quite pleased with myself, actually. I'd got the milk out, but where was the pus? Occasionally, the odd bacteria, particularly pus-growing bacteria, will get through. But of course, pasteurization is designed to take that out, as well as all sorts of other things. Right. Hmm. Had Heather been exaggerating about the pus? What about the growth hormone? Synthetic growth hormone is given to many cows in North America to drive these milking machines even faster. Heather was right. Growth hormones are injected into cows to make them produce more milk. That sounded really disgusting. But in Europe, it's banned. But before I wrote Heather off completely, I wanted to make sure. So I called the import man at Her Majesty's Customs. Is it legal to import dairy products from the USA that have been made from cows who've been treated with bovine growth hormones? Yes. OK, well, thanks very much for that. All it's right. Very interesting. So Heather was right about the growth hormones. I needed to find some hormonal milk. Of course, I wasn't going to get any fresh milk flown all the way from America, but we could be getting the milk in the processed foods imported from there. And after some research, it looked like I might have found some. Though not in the usual low-rent stuff I specialise in, but in upmarket food, like Pepperidge Farm cookies and crackers. Betty Crocker icing. Betty Crocker. 
Mm. And also my favourite, squeezy cheese. That is a classic find. Squeezy cheese made in the US of A, possibly with milk from cows that have had growth hormones pumped into them. Even the manufacturers of these products didn't know which cows the milk they'd used had come from. I needed to track down some of this elusive milk. I headed to the good old US of A. The home of the super cow. Pumped up on the growth hormone, RBST. Luckily, I was in the Midwest town of Stoughton at the same time as their annual dairy show. Can I stroke your head? That's all right. All these cows seemed very calm. Not hormonal at all. I like the, t the tail, it looks fantastic. Thank you. I thought I should get in with the friendly farmers to see if they had some of the milk. Hi there. We're, uh, we're filming for a BBC documentary about uh, dairy yeah. and, we're, and we're asking people about uh, RBST and growth hormones. Did, do you uh, use that or are you, do you have an opinion on it? Or? I don't have an opinion. I don't have any comment. All right, thanks anyway. Cheers. We want to ask people about their, their comments about RBST. I, I don't have any. You don't have any? Okay. Uh, but what about you chaps? Hello, we're from the BBC, we just do, filmed a documentary about dairy. Are you? Okay. Alright, cheers anyway, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Gosh, we, uh, we, we were speaking to a few dairy farmers and people involved in the uh, industry. They were being very nice, it was lovely, good atmosphere. Then we, we walked down another bit, spoke to a few fellas, um, the atmosphere changed completely. It was uh, cold, tense. It looked like we were in trouble. So uh, we've decided to uh, leave and uh, get the hell out of here. Americans normally shout about everything. What was going on? I only wanted a pint of super cow milk. There are no hormones added, no antibiotics. Lactate farmers pledge from cows not treated with artificial growth hormone. Out of all this milk, lots boasted it was hormone-free, but none was proud to mention it came from hormonal super cows. Now, apparently, uh, Land O'Lakes, their milk can come from cows that have been treated with uh, growth hormones. So that's brilliant, but it doesn't actually mention it anywhere on the packaging. Funny, isn't it? They thought they'd be proud of it. I was confused. The US were producing 14 million tonnes of the growth hormone milk every year. So where was it? I went to meet a scientist, Michael Hansen, to find out why this super milk was keeping such a low profile. What are the negative impacts on a cow from having this growth hormone? It actually causes a range of health problems in, in the cow. Let me show you. If you look here, this is actually mastitis, and that's an inflammation of the udders or teats. Yep. And clinical mastitis means visibly abnormal milk. So that means you can literally see the pus in the milk. There'll be clumps of it, there'll be blood. You cannot sell that uh, milk. Now, the animals can have subclinical mastitis. They still have these increased levels of dispersed pus cells, but you don't really see it. So milk in the US does contain pus? Pus, yes. Are there any other human health related uh, consequences of drinking this milk? The milk from cows that are injected with uh, bovine growth hormone have higher levels of another hormone called IGF-1 and that hormone we now know is intimately connected to a range of cancers breast cancer, colorectal cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, there's some bone tumors it's a very potent growth factor. It was hard to believe this hormonal milk was completely legal since it was being imported to the UK, I needed some reassurance. There was only one man that could do that, the spokesperson for the pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly. They paid $300 million for the right to sell this growth hormone, so they must think it's safe. But after all the disturbing things I'd heard, I wanted to see them drink the milk. I've right, just uh, pulled over in the spot where we're going to meet this guy who's called Dennis Erpelding. It looks like some sort of military facility. 
And that is a, a, an alarm that means that uh, their, their weapons have locked onto our car and uh, we could be destroyed at any moment, just so we know. Hang on, hang on. Hello, Whoa. Dennis. Yes. Hi. Hello, I'm Alex. Hi there. Alex, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Hi. Brilliant. So you can just drive in here and... Actually, I think we'll do it from out here um, because as a whole, being a research site, it's pretty limited okay. in um, access and things like that. Where's the nearest gents' toilets? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Maybe he didn't like the look of me, but I'd at least hoped to be allowed inside the security fence for our meeting. So far, I wasn't reassured. I asked Dennis what he would say to the people of Britain who might be consuming his milk. Number one is the milk is safe. Number two, it provides more affordable choice of milk. Number three, it really supports sustainability. And number one is the milk is safe. And is it and it tastes yeah. good? Absolutely. Okay, okay, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, we've got some. We've got some uh, milk. Would you uh, maybe just have a gla have a I've quick really drink got, of it? I've, I've got it. I'm supposed to be there ten minutes ago. With all due respect, we. So Dennis was sure it was safe, but sadly didn't have time to drink any. But a lot of people in the US didn't share Dennis's confidence, and two of America's biggest stores, Walmart and Costco, had stopped selling it after consumer pressure. It turned out the Americans weren't fans of super cow milk. Perhaps that's why it was making its way over to Britain, hidden in processed foods. I thought I'd give Her Majesty's Customs another quick call. Which imported dairy products would contain milk uh, that's come from cows treated with the bovine growth hormone? Uh, <clears throat> well, we don't, I don't think we have that level of detail available, I'm afraid. Uh, let me just, actually, if you just bear with me, I'll just check. Okay. No, it doesn't look like that, that, is, that is actually one of the categories. So, nowhere on your paperwork do they have to state whether or not it's come from cows that have taken bovine growth hormone? No. no. Really? And, and would you be able to give us details of any of the importers, who, the, who they are? No, we don't... Uh, <clears throat> we, we, we can't tell you who, who the importers are. So, you, you, they don't have to declare it, and you don't actually know the actual brand names of the products uh, from your records? No. And you can't not. tell me who the wholesalers are? No, trade not. OK. <laughs> it was baffling. Of the two million kilos of cheese, butter, ice cream and yoghurt we imported from the States last year, no one could say how much came from cows treated with growth hormones. I was surprised by our lax import policy, so I took a trip to the European Commission in Brussels, who banned the use of growth hormones here, to ask them why they then thought it was OK to import dairy products made from hormone-treated cows. I've got an appointment with a chap at the European Commission who says it's OK for us to import dairy products from America. Um, and uh, when I go and see him, I'm not going to go empty-handed. I've got a little surprise for him. Bonjour. Uh, je voudrais uh, de normal waffle. Ah, mag magnifique. That is your actual French. Bonjour. I wanted to get some Belgian specialities and top them with American dairy products, possibly made with hormone-produced milk, to feed to EC Agriculture spokesman Michael Mann, to reassure me it wouldn't give me cancer. We, we brought some American dairy products with us. Let me show you them. Okay. Um, we've got a, a, a mature cheddar squeezy cheese from squeezy, the US. Cheesy peas. Yeah. Old-fashioned foods. Um, that's American. We've also got uh, Betty Crocker ready to spread icing, rich and creamy. Mm, um, delicious. Would you be prepared to perhaps taste some of these things and just say to I'd be the delighted. public and say, that, you know, this is safe to eat, there's nothing to worry about? I'd be delighted to eat anything. Not too much. I'm, I'm a slim man. I need to remain slim. It's a bit cold, I would have thought. They are, they are a little bit cold. So what do I do? So you want to well, go hang on, just before you do, uh, would you, because with the BBC we have to be a bit careful on the old health and safety front, would you sign this disclaimer just to um, indemnify us from it? In case, that's in case I die, right? In case you die. Oh, fine. Yeah. Milk from cow streets with, I just, 
quickly run through it. Not from chaos treated with RBST, have IGF-1 levels which are 25 to 70 percent higher. Risk characterization is pointed Now, as disclaimers go, this one was quite wordy, but it was based entirely on the EC's own research into the effects of growth hormones on human safety and animal suffering. Animal cell proliferation increased relative risk of breast and prostate cancer. Colonic cancer due to prolonged exposure to carcinoma in the large bowel. Development of insulin dependent diabetes suggested as a marker of breast cancer. I am happy to consume this product made from milk which may have originated from cows treated with RBST. Hey, we're making this program. I might have to sign a bit of paper and try it. Um, okay. Michael duly signed the disclaimer. I suspected he was also a crap food connoisseur. It's delicious, I'm sure. It's not the best thing I've ever tasted. I, this. I, can't, I can't vouch for the actual quality of the, of the mouthfeel or taste experience. Right. I've been a big truffle spread fan. Still alive. Indeed, he was still alive. I waited a while, but he didn't die. If you're concerned about RBST growth hormones, once again, here are the reassurances I was given. Number one is Amelka safe. Still alive. Safe. Still alive. Is Amelka safe. Still alive. But then I received more reassurance. Betty Crocker got in touch to say that although there's only a bit of milk in it, things had changed. They could now confirm their rich and creamy cake topping doesn't contain growth hormone milk. And they think it's unlikely it did in the past. And they wanted to make it clear it had absolutely nothing to do with me. I love you, Mommy. Make someone happy. But I still had work to do. I was back on the hunt for more disgusting dairy. Then a couple of kids with funny moving eyebrows seemed to be trying to tell me something. Surely there was nothing disgusting about our fourth favourite dairy product, chocolate. Was there? Vegetable fat. Vegetable fat. Vegetable fat. Milk chocolate still contained milk, but what was all this vegetable fat doing in all of Britain's most popular chocolate bars? I needed to find out, but none of the big chocolate companies would talk to me. So I had to make do with the man who didn't use vegetable fat in his chocolate. So what kind of oil will the vegetable oil be? Usually the more likely palm oil. It's a fat that comes from the palm, yeah. it's, being, it's produced massively and it's cheap. That's the main reason. I don't think there is, it's not flavour. It's not purity, yeah. it's cheap. They should be using cocoa butter, the natural flavour, the natural fat from the cocoa bean. Yeah. And it's very, very cheap. And this is it, your actual palm oil. Um, I'm guessing that they have to sort of refine it to make it appropriate for putting in things like chocolate bars. But uh, look at it, it all sticks to my finger. It's quite, quite waxy, there's quite a few bits in it. And ironically, it's the same colour as an orangutan. Yes, orangutans. There was a very big reason why palm oil was hard to swallow. Because to produce it, vast areas of Southeast Asian rainforest were being cleared to make space to grow the palm trees. This meant the orangutans were being driven out, and it's been predicted that they could be extinct in just ten years. Call me sentimental, but this seemed pretty disgusting to me. And all of the big names in chocolate are using palm oil. It's in virtually every chocolate product we buy. And what's more, I found out all of this might be unnecessary because it was possible to get orangutan-friendly palm oil where rainforests weren't cut down to produce it. I was on my way to Hull to visit a company that was trying to sell this sustainable palm oil and having an uphill struggle shifting it. So, so, so how, how much did you bring in and how much have you sold so far? We brought a thousand tonnes in, it arrived early November um, and we've sold about 600 of that. The 400 tonnes that are left uh, is waiting in that tank. At this company, the bad palm oil was outselling the good palm oil by 400 to 1. Why weren't the chocolate makers buying the good stuff? It's not very popular, is it? Uh, no, the uptake hasn't been as, perhaps as, as, as much as we would have liked. Maybe it's a sales job that's required. Maybe I could help you out. I think it needs a fresh approach. I can go in there. I've got no axe to grind. I've got no history in the business. I'll go in there and I'll just say, look, 
this is the issue, let's get together and let's save the rainforest, let's save the orangutan, mm. let's uh, work ethically. Mm. First, I had to identify a likely customer. Using good palm oil would cost them half a pence more per bar. So I thought my best bet was to target a brand with ethical aspirations. Now, I've been doing a bit of research, and it's all very confusing, because the Galaxy Bar, which is made by Mars, is going to get the Rainforest Alliance seal of approval in 2010. But while the cocoa that's in it is 100% sustainable, the palm oil they use definitely isn't. So I don't understand what the Rainforest Alliance are going to make of this. It didn't seem likely that a group dedicated to protecting rainforest would give their seal of approval to a chocolate bar that was helping to destroy it. So I decided to check. I made a quick detour. Would the Rainforest Alliance endorse O'Reilly's chocolate product also made with unsustainable palm oil? How much palm oil would you use in an average week? We would so? never, ever, ever, ever use it. Completely banned in fine chocolate making, production. We would never recommend it, use it. OK. Well, I'm going to put some in our chocolate. OK. Well, Orangutan unfriendly chocolates, done. I wondered if the Rainforest Alliance spokesperson, Edward Millard, would like to try one. Chocolate monkey. Well, it's actually a chocolate orangutan. If I wanted to get this certified by yourselves, what mm. is the sort of minimum I would need to do? What you would need to do is show to us that the cocoa that that chocolate was made from has been bought from a certified rainforest farm. You can certify it. Now, th this particular chocolate is made with uh, unsustainable palm oil, which obviously has uh, a negative effect on, on the rainforest. The cocoa was 100% sustainable and verifiable. Would I still be able to use the sticker for that? You're not certifying the whole product, you're certifying the cocoa in the product, right? Right. Okay. So you will be using a seal of approval with the word cocoa attached to it. So what you would be translating to the consumer yeah. is you're only certifying the cocoa. So what, if, what about if, if the, the palm oil farms that we were using were, you know, burning down rainforest to create space? If, if you were aware of that, would, would that be a line in the sand? You would be using in your product an ingredient that we haven't been asked to audit, so therefore we don't know what's going on in that particular okay. um, situation. So, if you became aware of it, though, would that be would that be different? Would you, if if you found it, out, it doesn't that... make it different that we certify your cocoa. No, no. So Galaxy is going to get the seal of approval in 2010. Uh, they use unsustainable palm oil. To me, as a consumer who's picking that up, it, it, we just I'm just saying, oh. Rainforest, good. I want to save the rainforest. The, I'm saving the rainforest by taking this product when actually some of the stuff in it could actually be having exactly the opposite effect. Well, some of the stuff in it may need the same kind of sustainability criteria that, you know, we're getting on, on the cocoa. What do you think? They're starting to sweat a bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. here, they? They're not the only ones. <laughs> <laughs> Press out. Even though the Rainforest Alliance weren't insisting, I was sure Mars, the makers of Galaxy, would want to use the sustainable palm oil I'd found. I rang to tell them I held the key to making their chocolate bar truly ethical. This is a mock-up of a Galaxy bar featuring not only the uh, Rainforest Alliance certification, but also the uh, Orangutan's Choice badge that we're hoping to promote to chocolate companies such as Galaxy. But surprisingly, they didn't want to talk to me. So I decided to do a bit of doorstep selling with some orangutans who just happened to be doing work experience at the BBC. This is a sales pitch, so professionalism is very, very important. And just make it exciting, make it fun. Hello, here's our tanker. I had a tanker load of orangutan friendly oil from Hull and I was going to sell it to Mars. They had pledged to buy orangutan friendly, sustainable palm oil one day, but they hadn't committed to a date. Right, wagons roll. 
<laughs> As we voyaged to Mars, the adulation and support we received from other motorists really restored my faith in mankind. Look at them, they're all honking, they're all honking because they love orangutans. You know what, they're probably sitting there thinking, how on earth are we going to get to 100% sustainable palm oil? We don't even know where to get it from. We turn up, we can help them, job done. It sounds like the sales in the bag. Hello there, it's Alex Riley here from the BBC. Uh, I wonder if you could put me through to uh, somebody uh, high up in the Galaxy brand, please, the, uh, the Galaxy Mr Big. Hey. I'll tell you, enough look good, you two. The workers at Mars loved our palm oil almost as much as they loved the orangutans. I was convinced the sale was in the bag. Sorry, I need to know... Uh... Hello, oh, yeah, we're here with the BBC, BBC Three. We're filming a documentary yeah. uh, and, we, and we're chatting to... Um, I'm just trying to get through to the person at Galaxy who was, uh, was in charge of... Uh, but this is the reality of the sales game. You know, it's waiting around, it's trying to speak to people, it's, it's always been positive and always... Hello? Hello? Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, he's sending the chap down. Hi there. Hi there. Mr. Riley? Yes. Nice to meet you. Hi there, Joel. Hi. Nice to meet you. Just Hi, Roy. Just understand Hi. what you're trying to achieve here. Well, we, we've read your statements and, and we know that you're committed to getting sustainable palm oil into your chocolates. Well, we can help you. We've got some sustainable palm oil. This is a sample of it. And we just, you know, we'd like to make a sale. That, that's pretty much what we want to do. We want to pitch to you and say, you know, we can do it at a, at a good price. We can get it, you know, as soon as you want. We've got some supply in the UK. Uh, let's do a deal. I'd like you to move uh, back off the site, if you yeah. could. Yeah, we can do yeah. that. We can do that. We know that Mars are aiming to get to that 100% of sustainable palm oil. We're just saying we can get some of you. We're thinking maybe another bit of branding, the orangutan's choice. We've got 500 tonnes uh, up north. Can I give you a sample? This was good. The sale was very close. He was just doing the old walk away trick so that I'd lower the price. After a while, they sent out a lady. Was she coming to seal the deal or spank my naughty monkeys? <laughs> oh, we've got a commitment from them. Listen to this. Mars deals only with those suppliers of respect for the environment and is committed to working with all stakeholders to make progress towards more sustainable production, blah, blah, blah. We are going further. Now, bear in mind, just before I tell you this, they said our aim is to move towards 100% sustainable. We are going further, and our aim is to move to 100% RSPO certified palm oil originating from sustainable sources by 2015. We've got them to make a commitment that they're going to do it by 2015. Now, that, that's, I'm, I'm pleased with that. However, 2015, what's that, six years away? <sighs> the, we've got, what, ten years of orangutan left? There's going to be a lot fewer by 2015. Surely they can speed that up a little bit. I mean, we've got 500 tonnes in hull. I'd never imagined that chocolate would stick in my throat. But if big companies like Mars weren't going to buy sustainable palm oil until 2015, then the outlook's bleak for the last orangutans. And it turned out that orangutans weren't the only ones under threat, because there was another species facing extinction, this time much closer to home. Something was seriously afoot in our dairy industry. Louise, hi. Yes, it looks lovely, doesn't it? Bucolic even, you might say. But make no mistake, this is one of hundreds of farms which are now in deep crisis. Apparently, two dairy farmers were going bust every day, and at this rate, there wouldn't be any left in 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. I went to meet a dairy farmer called Dave to find out what was going on. How is business with the, with the dairy farming? Um, rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> we don't feel we get a fair share of the milk price that the customer you're paying for it. Yeah. What's the profit then after you've taken off your cost? Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all? No. Then yeah. There's obviously... Somebody's making a bit of money out of it at that end, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, supermarket size. We know they're making billions well, and billions. That's you. Yeah. Dave didn't want to give up on his cows and had found an ingenious way to subsidise the dairy herd. Um, honestly, I'm afraid there's actually nothing to see. Um, if I opened it up, there's nothing to see. Only no. a pipe coming out of the concrete. Um, 
Farmer Dave realised that his milk was literally cheaper than water. Luckily, he had plenty of that. He can sell his spring water for up to 90p per litre, which is five times the amount he gets paid for his milk. So, I mean, if, if, we, if we're losing dairy farmers at the rate we are, what, you know, what's going to happen in the next couple of years? We don't produce enough milk to our needs, um, and we'll have to import the milk, which isn't, doesn't seem to me like a very good idea. No. So, although we're paying up to 80p for a litre of milk at the supermarket, the amount that reaches the farmer is considerably less. I did some number crunching to see who was paying what. Now, it costs farmers 27.9 pence to produce a litre of milk. Out of the top five milk retailers, Tesco's farmers get the most, but still only 26.66p per litre. Farmers supplying Sainsbury's get 25.73 pence. Asda's get just 24.6. Morrison's gets 23.9 and at the bottom of the pile were the farmers supplying the co-op who get as little as 23.89 pence a litre. None of them paid enough to allow the farmers to make one penny of profit on a litre of milk. But what confused me most was the co-op. They were founded on being fair to farmers but now paid the least. It didn't seem to fit with their image. From community projects to a share of the profits, renewable energy to fair trade products, the cooperative believe that when the benefits are passed around, it's good for everyone. But the co-op's TV commercial had given me an idea I thought might help. You can carry it off. I went to co-op's headquarters in Manchester. Hiding at the back there with Dave and some of the dairy farmers who were all struggling to get a fair price for their milk. What do you think, lads? It's a bit droopy. Not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> if I gave them a quick makeover to look like South American milk farmers, I was sure the co-op would include them in their fair trade deal. It's either this or naked. It's up to you. It's up to you. <laughs> this is Manchester. They see all sorts every day of the week. Well, yes. We even got the help of Lulu, Britain's cutest cow. Just be yourself, act naturally, and do whatever you think is right. There's a good girl. <laughs> Here we are. Have you seen the sign? Yes. The cooperative. We believe that when the benefits are passed around, it's good for everyone. Passing the benefits around. So let's pass a few benefits around to UK dairy farmers. It's in the key of G. This is, this is the note you need. Milking cows has had its day. E I E I O. Cause the co op just won't pay. E I E I O. 24p, a 25p. It's nowhere near what it cost me. Milking cows has had its day. E I E I O. Makeover complete and song song. It was time to make our bid. Do you like the moustache? I've gone for a sort of man of the world look. Uh, I'm wearing crimply underpants and they're starting to... Uh... Hello, public relations. Hello there. Yes, it's uh, Alex Riley from the BBC here. We love the fact that... Uh... Uh, the co-op are, uh, you know, very ethical. They, they, and they do all the lovely fair trade stuff uh, overseas. And we're just thinking that you may have missed uh, a group of uh, needy farmers closer to home. The uh, dairy farmers in, in the UK. Oh, well, Alex, we've already given you a response. We've spoken to you and a number of your colleagues, and we've sent a response, huh? Oh. I'll refer you back to your producer, OK? Thank you, bye. Just asking them if there's... I was worried the farmer's message wasn't getting through. E-I-E-I-O I wear the low price here, a low price there I want to do a trade, but the trade ain't fair I'm surprised they haven't come down to see us. Uh, if they can't face us face to face, I think that's disappointing. Here's a statement from the cop. A spokesman for the cooperative group said, whilst we have been considering the possibility of operating a contract scheme similar to that operated by other retailers for some time, this was not possible to progress under our previous supplier. However, having recently renegotiated our milk supply contracts, we are confident that the cooperative is helping farmers in the dairy sector actually secure higher returns for generic model milk processing. Just fobbing us off as they always do. There's not a lot you can say to that. It's just, uh, 
Obviously untrue. I had to give them one more go. Hello, public relations. Hello, is is Alex Rally here again? I'm, we just okay, want to know how, you know, why you pay less than the other supermarkets, okay. and, and uh, you know, these dairy farmers can't make ends meet. Is no. it? Thanks very much, much, Alex. Goodbye. Do you, you think or what? Okay, she's uh, hung up again. She, she's uh, she's not she's not really pleased about it. Uh, she was getting a little bit aerated. Uh, she's referring me back to the responses that they've given, and the response they've given us is basically that they pay less than pretty much anybody else, and it's less than the cost of production. So uh, farmers are uh, scuppered. If the co-op and the other supermarkets wouldn't pay any more to the farmers, then it looked like British milk was on its way out. I needed to find another source, a source which could make Mr Riley's the mother of all milk suppliers. Then inspiration struck. A goddess spoke to me from the heavens. We should only drink the milk of our mothers, our mothers, our mothers, our mothers, our mothers, our mothers. That was it. I couldn't believe no one had ever thought of this before. It was a long shot, but it just might work. All I needed was a supply, and I was sure there was an ocean of the stuff out there waiting to be tapped. Come, really? <laughs> I went to meet my prospective herd. First of all, are you all breastfeeding? Yes. Yes? yes. What, would, what would you say would be your maximum production rate? My back, maximum production rate would be about 10 ounces, I reckon. If you can deliver the goods, then, you know, we can, t we can talk about it. We can, our prime milkers, we need to, uh, you know, look after them. If you want the best, you'll drink some breast. With my herd ready to milk, I just needed a buyer. And that had to be the supermarkets. Now, I'm uh, on my way to Asda now to uh, do a pitch to one of their dairy buyers now. I've got a bit of history with Asda. I did do a pitch with them uh, once before. Uh, didn't really work out, to be honest. I think I'm taking the piss or what? So, I'm a little bit nervous, and I'm hoping that I don't see any of the same people I saw last time. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hi. Hello. First of all, milk. Everybody loves milk. However, there is a problem. And the problem is this. The problem is that the cost of producing milk is 27.9 pence per litre. Asda pays farmers 24.6p a litre. Two dairy farmers are going out of business every day. Okay. At this rate, 53% of our dairy products will be imported by 2030. We won't be self-sufficient in liquid milk, but we have the solution. A solution that is locally sourced, um, could, could be produced uh, locally in, in every community, and is extremely healthy. And this is the product that we're talking about. Mama Riley's fresh breast milk just like your mama used to make and we've actually we've added in lovingly made in bristols just to get, get the idea across questions do you have any we can sample yes okay two separate this is um from uh, a mother whose child at the time was about five months old okay and what kind of shelf life do you get on it well in the fridge uh 48 hours in the freezer, I think a month. So, have you done shelf life trials on it? No. no. Okay. No, we haven't done shelf life trials. Because you would need to do shelf life trials on it to establish what shelf life you can get on it. Yes. That's, that's got some of uh, the milk in it now. Um, but it would be, you know, it would obviously be a premium thing, something to be savoured, something to be, you know, if you, want, if you want a treat, if you're having a dinner party, you want to have the, the most lovely milk. So what, what research have you done then in terms of whether or not customers are actually going to be prepared to buy but altogether, that? altogether? From yeah. Not very much. Okay. Not very much, no. I mean, what does that mean, no. not very much? Well, it means none whatsoever. You know, it's, we're breaking new ground. We haven't done the, we haven't done the research of, into the demand side. We just we want to see what the process is. We want you know, for you to tell us if you think it's a go or not. And would you like to try a uh, drink of the... Uh, yeah. yeah, it's 100% <laughs> good. Like, you drink yours too. Are you going to down that in one? <laughs> but this is a premium product. Mm, lovely. How much would you anticipate people would drink at once? 
the, f the first few drops are like nectar, aren't they? They're just like a sort of a clear nectar-like well, fluid. And that I'm, not, I'm not sure I would agree with that amazing. in terms of nectar. Um, it's really interesting what you've brought in today. So for me, though, there's still two or three pieces that are significantly yeah. missing. The piece on the consumer research, you need to go ahead and, and come back and represent yeah. that. And also, I'd need to get an understanding of costs because it seems to me you've got a very complex supply chain until that, until you come back to me with that. I'm afraid that's probably the end of it today. My pitch had been a roaring success. I knew the demand was out there. The kidneys oiling. But every product needs a grand launch, and this was Mama Riley's moment. With the buzz I was going to create, I'd have all the big players begging me to supply them. Oh, now we're talking professional. <laughs> that is prof. It's Mama Riley's human breast milk. It's wholesome, it's healthy, it's suitable for vegans. Who would like to try some of this new product that could be going into Asda? Human breast milk. Oh no, thanks. No? No, I'm afraid, no. Okay. Are you sure about that? Human breast milk. I'm not lying. Human breast milk. <laughs> right, it's the mothers I feel sorry for. The amount of flipping effort that went into getting this out this morning. What, what, something from, you'd a be human? from a human breast? No way. <laughs> no. Perhaps the lads might be a bit more up for it. It's very good for you. This count as cheating. Cheat on, I don't know on my your girlfriend. girlfriend. Might, yeah. Well, she can join us. Hold on one sec. So, yeah. some people are going to try some human breast milk. Am I allowed to try some? It's not in a breast, it's in a cup. <laughs> okay. Okay, my. <laughs> To be honest, it has been rather disappointing. The demand isn't really there for uh, Mama Riley's human breast milk at the moment, but when the cow's milk starts running out, these people are going to be beating a path to my door. And if people really couldn't stomach my breast milk, I'm sure the food industry will be ready to fill the gap with plenty of disgusting dairy substitutes of their own. Coming up next on BBC Three, there's another chance to see tonight's EastEnders.